So we continue on Book of Numbers from, from yesterday. Uh, as I told the, the Ashlanders yesterday, that Exodus goes from Egypt to Mount Sinai and Numbers goes from Mount Sinai right to the border of the Promised Land. So to see, well, what's the difference between the two? That's the difference. And I also said yesterday that the book is broken up into two parts, chapters 1 to 26 deals with the first generation, that is the current generation that was in Egypt and was led out by Moses to Mount Sinai to establish that covenant. And then 26 to the end of the book deals with the next generation, okay? And I said yesterday that there's, there's a, a part, a moment, where something significant is going to happen where the focus is going to be on the next generation. And that moment is today's first reading. Okay, so Moses sends people ahead, one from each tribe, to reconnoiter, okay, to scout, okay, to check out the land. And so these guys go out, and what do they see? Well, they see a bunch of, of Joes, okay, huge men, intimidating men, okay, you know, the land of the giants, and the cities are fortified, and we're like mere grasshoppers in the midst of these Joes, you know. And so they come back, and ten of them are saying, yeah, we got a big problem here. And then two of them, and one of them happens to be Joshua, says, no, with the help of the Lord, we can defeat these men. Again, I mentioned Joshua because Joshua is very soon is going to be an important figure okay, as we continue on with these Old Testament readings. But you might say, wow, this, this God of the Old Testament, he's what a mean God. He, he punishes these people for being afraid of them by saying that they're never going to enter this land, that they're all going to die. The first generation is going to die right here in this desert. And I said, well, no, God's not mean. Here's an important spiritual lesson here. God gave them what they wanted. God gave them what they wanted. And we've seen this done before. When the people complained about that food of the angels, that heavenly bread, that manna in the desert I talked about on Sunday, we saw it in Exodus at one point, the people complained about it. We're sick of this food. And so God gives them something else. He rains down meat, so much meat that they can't consume all of it. But the people didn't want to go into the land. They didn't want it. And again, we heard what's their constant complaint. Oh, we're going to die here in the desert. Or we're going to go back to Egypt. Notice that they're so close, and yet they still want to go back to Egypt. They want to go all the way back. You know, it's like, you know, getting to your five-hour trip, getting to your destination, and all of a sudden the children are like, oh, let's go home. And you're like, well, no, we just drove five hours. But God gave them what they wanted. That's divine justice. Because what we want many times isn't what is best for us. We have this fallen nature where we crave such insignificant things. And God allows it. He says, okay, you want it? Here, have it. Hoping that eventually we'll come to our senses, we'll be unhappy with it, and we'll seek something greater. That's how really the spiritual life works. What we think we want. Well, we want more money. Okay, well, here's more money. Are you happy? You want more power? Okay, here it is. Are you happy? The answer is always, eventually, no. I need more money. I need more power. I need more pleasure. So divine justice here for the people that come, murmured against Moses and against the Lord. In fact, it doesn't tell us in the numbers, but... The, the people wanted to stone Moses. They wanted to kill him. 
after they, they hear the reports of what, what awaits them. And so God gave them what they wanted. They didn't want to go into the promised land. So he's going to let them die in the desert. And then we're going to see that once every single member that was part of that exodus, every single member that saw all the ten plagues and the cross in the Red Sea and were fed with the bread of heaven, every single one of them that then is still, after not learning the lessons of the golden calf, still murmured against the Lord. Once they die out, a new generation, because God's going to keep his promise, the promise that he made to Abraham. But he's going to do it with the next generation. And we'll pick up the story from there. May God bless you.